I am uh, Dr. Richard Satava, Professor of Surgery at the University of Washington in Seattle, and I am also the Senior Science Advisor at the U.S. Army Military Research Command, where we do medical research. The telerobotics are a term that's applied to the use of robots for doing surgery by a surgeon. The robot doesn't do the surgeon, but the surgeon directs the hands of the robot to perform the operations. The surgeon is sitting at the robot workstation, controlling the arms directly next to him that's operating on the patient. Tele-robotics technically is operating at a distance in a different room or a different city. That's a potential that we may see in the distant future when the telecommunication part as well as the robotic part gets more advanced than they are today. The purpose of the robot is principally to allow a surgeon to perform an operation that is not able to be done with their own hands beyond the instruments that we have today. Because first, we can get into places and in smaller places than we can with our hands today because the instruments are much smaller. Uh, the second is something called tremor. When you're operating on very tiny places, what it allows you to do is keep your hand steady. The robot is able to follow the motions and the shaking of your hand and remove them so that whenever you move, there's no shaking to them. And the third is precision. A human is only capable of positioning uh, a tool or an object with what we call 100 micron accuracy, which is uh, about uh, a tenth of a millimeter. The robot can do it 10 times better. And so we could be much, much more precise and accurate if we used a robot for tiny surgery than if we used our own hands. The robot is not only a machine, but it's an information system. I'm looking at a TV camera and the image is the representation of the patient. I'm not looking at the patient. Likewise, when I use a robot and I operate, when I move my hand, I'm not touching them. I'm sending information, electronic signal, to the tips of the robot and it's doing it. So it completely changes, if you will, the way a surgeon can do surgery. They are now information managers. And the reason that that's important, because there are many other things that we are doing today that are forms of information. For example, when we take a scan, a CT scan of the body, that's information about my patient. If I draw a computer picture and I use it for simulation and training, that's an information representation of education and training. And if you bring these together, you can put them all together in a robot. And so you can do all these things that normally I would do the training over there and I would do my images over there and I would do my surgery over there. You can bring them all together in one place, which is at the robotic workstation. And we can bring in information about the patient as well. This also gives us the opportunity, as I mentioned before, to extend the capability beyond what a human by themselves is able to do. We can be watching the video of the patient while we're operating and bring in an x-ray and put the two images together and I could have x-ray vision. I can see inside of the body of the patient by taking their x-ray and combining it with their real video image. So it gives us an opportunity to do things that otherwise humans aren't physically able of doing. So these are some of the main advantages that we have of robotic or telerobotic surgery that we say today. And we think that this may well be the beginning because we are now operating the same way that we used to before, and we can also now operate on things that are smaller, more delicate, and need more precision. We know that in other areas of medicine and in research, we're beginning to operate on, uh, we're beginning to do research on genetics and on chromosomes on individual cells. And so in the future, what we will see is that the surgeon will also be able to operate inside of tiny cells and actually be able to remove parts of chromosomes and genes. I can also do things in ways that I couldn't possibly do as a human being. I, that means I can't do genetics with my hands, but I can do it with my own hands if I use a robot. I can do remote surgery, but I can't do it remotely with my hands, but I can use it with a robot. 
So these, I think, are the main capabilities that the robots give us, and it, it fits in with the, the, the change in medicine and information as we know it today.